Hey everybody, really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the amazing Shinsengumi Heroes in Love. We are on Sonosuke Harada's route on chapter 4. Sorry, does this mean our honeymoon period's over and something bad is going to happen after all this sweetness that we've been through? <laughs> I don't know if I want that or not. Alright, well, let's see what's about to happen. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. June 5th. I was busy all day from morning till night. The city had been in a state of high alert since a few days prior. Everyone was restless. I was staying with Sonosuke at the Shinsengumi's base while I did housework. I wasn't sure what was going on outside. This was because... Shizuru. Oh, Sonosuke. What's wrong? Do you need something? No, not really. Are you cooking right now? Yeah, I am. You can't have any until it's done. You know I wouldn't spoil my appetite like that, right? What? You're always trying to get a taste. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jeez, your jokes are so harsh, Chizuru. Oh, he looks like he really means that. Oh, come on, you're kidding me. You weren't really... You're not... Your feelings aren't hurt, are they? Sonosuke, where are you? Voice Captain Hijikata is calling me. Sorry, Chizuru. See you later. Oh, but dinner's gonna get cold. Sonosuke was always like this. He never talked about work. Because he doesn't want to worry me. I heard that one of the enemy factions was captured, and they found a horde of weapons. I even heard that the prisoners were being tortured, so the Shinsengumi could figure out their plans. Ugh. I wasn't involved, so I only knew the rumors that were being spread. So we really are gonna get into serious things with the Shinsengumi. When the sun was setting... Oh, are you guys ready? Stay focused. If you let your guard down, you won't live to see tomorrow. Yes, sir. Good. Then let's go. Follow me. Yes, sir. I stood silently watching the soldiers marching behind Sonosuke. Their weapons and armor were being bought to them separately, so they were unarmed. They didn't want to stand out, so they left in small groups. I don't understand what this means, but... I imagined the battle along with their spirits as they were overwhelmed. There was a chance they wouldn't come back at all. That was the first time I really understood what that meant. I knew they arrested people during their patrols. I thought I knew what it meant when they were rushing into danger. Chizuru. Nevertheless, Sonosuke was always lively and smiling. I never thought that I might never see him again. Keeping my sorrow inside, I just stood there. I couldn't keep thinking like that. I told myself that I needed to pull myself together. The only thing I can do is... pray that Sonosuke comes home safely. Not to mention protecting the base. I clenched my wrist with determination. Even though I said protect, I didn't mean helping out with the attack. I was going to make sure they could relax. When they returned. That was all I could do. Still, if my feelings were strong enough, I was sure they would reach everyone. I was sure they would be useful to Sonosuke. I continued to stare out at the gate as if I was watching him, though he wasn't there. I couldn't sleep that night. He didn't come back. I wondered what was happening. Was Sonosuke safe? I turned over in bed and listened closely in case someone came home. It was a very long night. I couldn't bear it any longer. When it became light out, I rushed out of the base. It was dimly lit but I ran and searched for Sonosuke. I remembered hearing the reinforcements were meeting in the Gion district. I didn't know where they were headed after that, though. I desperately ran around searching for something, for someone who could help me. That's not a good idea. It's not very productive. I went down Sanjo Road. I noticed a crowd in front of Ikeda... Wait, is that supposed to be Ikedaya or Ikeda? Like in the other, like in Hakuoki. I don't know. Well, it says Ikedaya, so I'll have to say that and in. I could see Sonosuke as well. Sonosuke! You're safe! Huh? Chizuru? If it's Ikeda, this is not a good place for me to be right now. I was relieved, but Sonosuke's eyes opened up wide. What's wrong? What in the world are you doing here? It was like he couldn't believe what he was seeing. He continued to ask me questions. I was worried about you, Sonosuke. I'm sorry for acting so selfishly. I was so worried about you, Sonosuke. If something happened to him, when I thought about that, I couldn't just sit at the base. 
You were worried about me. That's why you went around searching for me so early in the morning. I swear. You're so cute, Chizuru. Sanosuke hugged me. Don't worry, I'll be fine. We weren't completely sure they would be here. That's why the troops split up during the search. I'm not sure if that was good or bad luck, but we ended up arriving late. We didn't do much work. No, we're just guarding the samurai we arrested. To ease my worries, Sanosuke uncharacteristically talked about work. We ran after the guys who escaped. As you can see, I'm fine. But everyone else... Captain Kondo and the others who went inside are in an even worse condition. Sanosuke let his shoulders drop, and his tone became serious. I looked around and suddenly realized. Shinpachi's left hand was injured, and blood was gushing out of it. Soji's jacket was soaked in blood. He stood there as if nothing was wrong, but his face was pale. Blood was streaming down Heisuke's forehead, and looked like a serious injury. I guess these injuries were all actually historically accurate too, because... These are the same injuries they had in Hakuoki. It must have been a terrible fight. I was relieved Sonosuke was fine, but everyone else was injured. I was embarrassed of myself. However, I was still glad Sonosuke didn't get hurt. I couldn't help but feel that way. I felt a little guilty about it. I, I'll go get a towel. Bandages and medicine as well. I regretted not bringing those things with me when I ran out of the base. It's okay. We have a simple first aid kit here, so we should be fine. We've even called for a doctor. Sonosuke persuaded me not to get medicine. I thought I should stay and help everyone, but... Can you go back to the base and fix up something for us to eat? I skipped the line. Everyone's starving after running around all over the place. His tone was soft, but his eyes were serious. He wants to get me out of trouble, probably. Am I in the way if I stay here? Yep. I come all this way. I wanted to help. I wanted to be by his side. So I contested him. You're not in the way, but... If you stay, you'll see and hear a lot of unpleasant things. So, it's best if you don't stay too long. He was worried about me, offering me these kind words. Okay. I'll cook something up and wait for you. Come home soon, okay? I was worried about everyone else's injuries, but an experienced person would do a better job. I saw that Sonosuke was uninjured, so I was relieved. I decided to go back early and make preparations for everyone's return home. Oh, I didn't want you to see all this bloodshed. But I was glad you came all the way out here for me. You really surprised me. Waiting for me someplace safe. It's almost like we're a married couple. See, the blushing again! <laughs> Sonosuke shyly smiled. I returned to the base and made a large batch of rice balls for everyone. I made simple things like miso soup and pickled vegetables in large quantities as well. After I finished cooking, the soldiers came home one by one. People were carried on cots as well. It was painful to look at, but they smiled triumphantly as they came through the door. It was refreshing to see. I learned this afterward, but a faction of the anti-shogunates had planned on burning Kyoto down. In all the chaos, they planned to kidnap the Emperor. I was so proud of the Shinsengumi because they prevented it from happening. Everyone let out a cheer for the food I prepared for them. They ate it cheerfully. It was a magnificent sight. I was glad I'd listened to Sonosuke and had prepared food for everyone. Sonosuke laughed merrily, and I couldn't help but follow suit. Almost everyone was done eating. I started to clean up when... Sonosuke appeared in front of me. I'll help. What are you saying? You must be tired. Go rest. Then save the cleaning up for later. Can you come with me to my room? It wasn't the usual casual tone, nor was he teasing me. I had a hunch that he wasn't joking this time. I still had things to clean, but I put them aside and followed Sonosuke to his room. That easily, huh? We went into his room and he closed the door. Sonosuke hugged me tightly. As he embraced me, he put me down onto the floor. I looked up at the ceiling and at Sonosuke's face. He put one of his arms around my head, as if he was protecting me. Our eyes met. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Sonosuke, what's wrong? He looked worried, so I unconsciously put my hand on his cheek. Sonosuke grinned and kissed my hand softly. Sorry. When I looked at your face, I was so relieved. 
Can we stay like this for a little while? Sanosuke looked desperate and asked me to forgive him. When he said it like that, I couldn't resist any longer. Plus, he came home safely and I was able to see his smile again. I was relieved as well. Sonosuke didn't say anything and put his hand behind my back. He put his head on my shoulder. It was summer, but his body felt a little cold. Maybe it was from his sweat. You're so warm. You're just cold is all. I started to get embarrassed and looked away as I whispered to him. Then, will you warm me up? He whispered into my ear and kissed my neck. Our bodies were inseparable. My heart felt like it was about to explode. I realized Sonosuke could probably feel it and got even more embarrassed. He stole my lips and his hands started to grope my body. My body stiffened because of his rough hands. Sorry. Sonosuke realized this and suddenly stopped moving. It's unfair if I do it like this. I'm taking advantage of your kindness. You were just worried because I wasn't acting like myself, right? Yet I... I was using you and hurt you in the process. I'm such a horrible person. Sonosuke held his head and blamed himself. Uh, I'm not hurt at all. I embraced Sonosuke. I don't care if you're using me. Uh, I don't... I'm happy to take care of you when you're feeling down. Even if I was just convenient for him. He chose me and no one else. I was helping him. I was content with that. Why are you... He whispered to me, irritated, as he put his head softly onto my shoulder. Sonosuke didn't try to do anything else to me. That was why I didn't try to run away. As we tightly hugged each other. We didn't exchange words, and our bodies were still... We spent what seemed to be an eternity together. Sonosuke was a playboy, but he just hugged me. If I told someone, I was sure they wouldn't believe it. Of course, I had no intention of telling anyone. I decided to keep it to myself. If he's such a playboy, why hadn't he made any moves before this? I don't believe it. He's not really a playboy. Chapter 5 will be, That's got nothing to do with you. And we will hear that in the next video. Alright, so we're definitely going to have some drama then. He's going to be angry. Oh, please don't let it be some stupid misunderstanding. Let it just be us being worried about him on the job or something. I hate the misunderstandings. I like it when it's a real danger. That's that's much more that's much more passionate. That's more conducive to passionate uh, scenes. Alright, well that's my last recording for tonight. Because I need to get some sleep. But by the time these air, it'll be the next day, and I'll be recording some more videos tonight. So the rest of Sonosuke's wrath in this game I should have published on Thursday. And then I'll read a bit more in his route on Hakuoki. Well, hope to see you there or in some of my other future videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.